This is part 15 of WCF video series. In this video, we'll discuss exception handling in WCF. For the purpose of this demo, I've created a simple calculator WCF service. If you look at the calculator service itself, we've got two files here iCalculatorService.cs, this is the interface file where we have a single service contract and a single operation contract within that service contract. And if you look at this operation contract here, it takes two parameters of type integer and returns an integer. And if you look at the service implementation itself, you know, the implementation of this divide method is straightforward. All it does is divide the numerator by denominator and then return that result back. So straightforward calculator service. And then we have hosted this calculator service using a console project. So this calculator service host is a console project within the application configuration file. This is the same configuration that we have done in the previous sessions of this video series you know, to host a WCF service. So basically we have specified our service name here and then we have the endpoint where we have specified the ABC of the service endpoint that is the address binding and the contract and then we have the base address and then we have specified service behavior to enable service metadata exchange. We associated this behavior with this service using behavior configuration. And then within program.cs file, we have the necessary code to open the service host. I'll have all this code available on my blog in case you need it. So the service host is already running. And I also have implemented a client for this calculator service. And the client is an ASP.NET web application project. So I've created an empty ASP.NET web application and then added a reference to the calculator service. So if you look at, um, you know, the way we have added the reference, you know, we simply specify the base address of the calculator service. And then, you know, once we click OK, it's going to ask us to provide a namespace and the namespace that I have given is calculator service. So we have a reference to a calculator service and here is the web form design which is straightforward again. We have got a couple of text boxes, a button and a label control. This label will display the result of you know the division. And within the click event handler of the button, we are retrieving the numerator and denominator from the respective text boxes, converting them to integer and storing those values in these variables. And then we are creating an instance of the proxy class here and then invoking the divide method, passing in the numerator and denominator, finally converting the result to a string and then assigning that to the text property of the label control. So let's go ahead and run the client. So let's enter a numerator of 20 and a denominator of 5. Divide. We get the result as expected. Okay. Now let's divide a number by 0. So once we click divide, what's going to happen? The service divide method will be called. And, uh, you know, when we divide a number by zero, you know, we get an exception, divide by zero exception. So the service is actually going to throw an exception. And let's see what happens when an exception is thrown from a WCF service. So once we click this button, look at that, we get that yellow screen of death. And if you look at the error, it doesn't say anything about divide by zero exception. Look at the error message, what it says, the server was unable to process the request due to an in, uh, internal error. For more information about the error, either turn on, include exception detail in faults. Okay, so basically, if you look at the exception details here, look at what we are getting back. We are getting a fault exception back. Okay, so what is this fault exception? There's nothing but a SOAP fault exception. So what happened to the actual .NET exception, that is the divide by zero exception that has occurred in the WCF service? So when an exception occurs in a WCF service, you know, that exception is a .NET exception here. Now the .NET exception is not sent back to the client. Now that object you know, an exception is also nothing but an object. So that object needs to be serialized into an XML format before it can be sent to the client. 
okay so the exception is converted into something called soap fault okay which is an XML format and then that soap fault is returned to the client and that's the reason why we are getting a fault exception here and by default, when there is an unhandled exception in a WCF service, the exception details are not included in the fault exception that is returned to the client. Okay, and why does WCF do that by default? Because of security reasons. You know, service is something internal to the organization. That service could be consumed by external clients, and we don't want to be sharing, you know, the application code which you know the exception details basically include the application code as well and we don't want to share that with with client applications right so by default you know WCF will not include an unhandled exception details in the SOAP fault that is returned to the client but sometimes for debugging purposes we want to include exception details in the SOAP fault and in order to do that there are two ways okay so when an exception occurs in a WCF service the service serializes the exception into a SOAP fault and then sends that SOAP fault to the client but by default unhandled exception details are not included in SOAP faults that are propagated to the client applications for security reasons instead a generic SOAP fault is returned to the client for debugging purpose, if we want to include exception details in SOAP faults, we need to enable include exception detail in faults setting. And we can do that in two ways. The preferred approach is to use the config file, as you can see here. Notice that we are specifying a service behavior. And look at this element right here, service debug element. And we are setting include exception detail in faults attribute to true. So let's include the setting in our service configuration file and see what's going to happen to the SOAP fault that is returned. So let's get to the application configuration file. So we already have a service behaviors section here. And let's include service debug element and then set include exception detail in false to true. Let's stop the host that's already running let's rerun the service host let's go back to the client and then click divide now look at that we get still a fault exception okay and now look at this the actual exception information is displayed attempted to divide by zero okay that's the actual exception so we cannot divide a number by zero so we know what the problem is and we are going to fix it okay so basically sometimes for debugging purposes we want to include exception details in false and if we want to do that one of the options is to use service behavior configuration and set this attribute to true and another approach is through code using the service behavior attribute and then we specify this named parameter to true okay so uh, always prefer using configuration over code because if you change configuration, you don't have to recompile and redeploy your application. But if you change your code, you need to rebuild and redeploy your application. And as far as SOAP faults are concerned, these are very commonly asked interview questions. What happens when an exception occurs in a WCF service? Or what is a SOAP fault? Or how are WCF service exceptions reported to client applications? Now the answer for all of these three questions you know is the same thing whenever there is an exception in a WCF service the exceptions are serialized into SOAP faults before returned to the client and by default the exception information is not included in the SOAP fault that is sent to the client and why does WCF does do that by default that's for security reasons and for debugging purposes, if we want to include exception detail in false, all we need to do is set that setting to true. And we can do that either in the config file or in code. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.